Hey everyone, welcome to this video where I'll show you how I made this SPWM module. SPWM stands for Sinusoidal Pulse Width Modulation. This kind of technology is frequently used in pure sine wave inverters. These are the parts required to make the SPWM module. I have not used any microcontroller over here, rather I have made the entire module using operational amplifiers, a few additional components like capacitors, resistors and variable resistors. It's important that we place the components in the right position so that the solder traces are small and the usage of additional wire is minimal. Before we start making the project, here's some theory regarding the generation of SPWM signal. SPWM is basically created when we compare triangular waveforms of different frequencies. To generate the two triangular waveforms, I've used four, a circuit of four operational amplifiers over here. I've used the IC LM324 to generate the two triangular waveforms. Let's have a look at how we generate the triangular waveforms. First, this op amp is configured to act as an integrator. The non-inverting terminal of this comparator is biased at VCC by 2 or half the supply voltage which is generated by this resistor divider network over here. A virtual connection between the inverting and the non-inverting inputs allows a constant current to flow through R which slowly charges the capacitor. When it reaches 75% of the supply voltage, the comparator output changes to the maximum, that is the supply voltage. At this point, the integrator begins to deintegrate, causing the output voltage to slowly decrease. When it reaches 25% of the supply voltage, the comparator output again becomes zero, the capacitor charges again, and the cycle continues. The frequency of generation of the triangular waves depend upon the values of the resistor and the capacitor used. This is the formula to calculate the frequency of the triangular waves. The first combination of the operational amplifier generates a triangular wave of frequency of 1 kHz and the second triangular wave generation circuit creates a frequency of 10 kHz. When these both triangular waves are compared using a comparator, for this circuit I have used the LM358 comparator, we get an SPWM signal. Before starting the soldering process on the wearable, let's implement the entire circuit on breadboard and test it out. Over here you can see the 1 kHz triangular waveform generated by one of the triangular waveform generators. This is the 10 kHz triangular wave signal generated by the other set of operational amplifiers. This is the comparator output on comparing both the triangular waves. As you can see, our circuit works just fine on the breadboard. After successfully testing the circuit on the breadboard, let's start soldering the components on the wearable. As you can see, I have already soldered the IC base and the additional resistors and capacitors needed to generate the triangular waveforms. I have also added the variable resistor to fine tune the frequency of the waves. Let's add the operational amplifier. Here are some images of the circuit in progress. This is what the circuit looks like after all the soldering process has been completed. 
I've added a layer of hot glue at the back to prevent any shorts or loose connections. Now coming to the pinouts of this module, there are a total of 5 pins. The first two pins are for the power supply of the module, which is ground and VCC. The third pin is for the fast triangular wave. The fourth pin is for the slow triangular wave. And the final fifth pin is the actual SPWM output. Let us connect the SPWM module on a breadboard so that we can attach the necessary power supply and observe the final signals. The black and yellow wires connect to ground and VCC respectively. For supplying power to the SPWM module, I'll be using 5 volts from the Arduino. As you can see, our final setup is complete. I have powered the SPWM module and also connected an oscilloscope to observe the signals. Let us attach the probe of the oscilloscope to the fast triangular wave. As you can see, we have a rough triangular wave of frequency of near about 10 kilohertz. Adjust the frequency using the potentiometer and bring it close to 10 kilohertz. Next, we observe the signal of 1 kHz triangular wave. Adjusting the frequency accordingly to get close to 1 kHz. Lastly, we attach the probe of the oscilloscope to the SPWM output and as you can see, we have a clear representation of SPWM on the oscilloscope. We can adjust the time base for proper observation of the signal. I hope this video was useful to you. Please like, share and subscribe. Do drop your feedbacks in the comment section below. I have put the link of Instructables where I have discussed this project in more details in the description. See you next time.